You're listening to the official podcast of Asbury University, produced by students with God-honoring conversations that inform, edify, and encourage. This is Asbury. We explore culture and current topics through a Christian worldview, promoting a well-balanced life, and we empower our community to belong, become, and be set apart. I'm your host, Abby Lobb. Welcome to This is Asbury. this episode, psychology professor and honors program director Dr. Paul Nesselrode has a conversation with Dr. Carl Truman. Dr. Truman was visiting campus last fall and listen in as he and Dr. Nesselrode discuss his new book. Hello, my name is Dr. Paul Nesselrode, honors director and professor of psychology here at Asbury University. Uh, I'm so pleased to be sitting here today with Dr. Carl Truman. Dr. Truman is a Christian theologian and ecclesiastical historian who serves in the Department of Biblical and Religious Studies at Grove City College. He is a highly sought-after speaker and teacher and has authored numerous books, recently and notably a book entitled The Rise and Triumph of the Modern Self, Cultural Amnesia, Expressive Individualism, and the Road to Sexual Revolution. If I can just personally interject, I'd like to say that I believe this is this to be one of the most important books I've read in many years. So welcome, Carl, and thank you for giving us a few moments to interact with you. Well, thanks for inviting me, Paul, and thanks very much for your kind words of welcome. Yeah, great. Well, so we just have time for a couple questions. Um, in your book, you help us understand the emergence of and the unique features of the modern self. That is the current way we have come to think about our own selves and other selves. So my question is, how does this modern understanding of selfhood interact with and maybe interfere with the process of becoming Christ-like in our, in our own Christian walk? Well, that's a very good question. And perhaps to begin with, I'll just outline some of the aspects of the modern self that I think are significant to the answer. I think above all, the modern self is marked by granting uh, an authority to our inner feelings. Human beings have always had inner feelings. Uh, If you read the Psalms, the Psalms are full of the psalmist expressing his inner emotions regarding various situations. But what's different today is that we have granted these inner feelings a powerful authority over our identities. Uh, Now, when you think about that, that has implications not just for how we think about ourselves, but how we think about other people. And I think specifically for how we think about external authority. Uh, By and large, in in times past, external authority had a tremendous power. Uh, We thought of ourselves as defined by the great external realities of life. Now, in granting our inner feelings such tremendous authority, we've, we've shifted ourselves into a world where I would Put it this way, we are increasingly impatient with external authority, that external authority has an intuitive implausibility about it. Now, if you hold that in mind and then come back to the question of of how does this interact with or how does this shape notion of Christian discipleship, I think what it potentially does is make us very impatient with the idea of discipleship as formation discipleship as as me being formed by that which comes from outside. Uh, Give an example, Psalm 73. If you think of Psalm 73, the psalmist is is really struggling with his inner feelings. He's really struggling with why is it that the good die young? Why is it that the wicked live to a grand old age and then die peacefully in their beds? And this is driving him almost to despair. He said, I almost stumbled. I, I almost fell on this point until I went to the sanctuary. What the psalmist is doing there, of course, is he's going and he's uh, setting himself within the context of of God's covenantal presence. And then everything makes sense to him. And if you read the psalm in in this way, you can say, well, what's happening is he's bringing his inner feelings uh, into line with the external authority of God's covenant history with his people. If the psalmist were alive today, I think he would simply have railed against God. Uh, Why am I feeling bad? Uh, there would be no 
desire in the psalmist to submit his feelings to this external authority. And I think we see that in the Christian church. How many people choose the church they go to on the basis that it it, it scratches their itch, it fulfills their need. Uh, the church is there to allow them to fulfill themselves. So I think the the primary problematic interaction of the modern self with Christian discipleship is the way the modern self makes us impatient with external authority. And the greatest external authority, of course, is is God himself. One more question. So if that last question was more descriptive, let me ask a question that's more prescriptive. How should being a Jesus follower shape our identity claims in ways that perhaps perhaps contrast with this modern understanding of the self? That's a very good question. Uh, and there are many, many aspects to that that we cannot possibly cover in a, in a short podcast interview. But again, sort of building off my analysis in my first answer, I would say the first thing is uh, we need to understand that Christian discipleship is not rooted in my inner self. It's rooted in the community. It's rooted in the body of the church. So the first thing that a Christian needs to grasp in terms of their identity is my identity is not something that wells up from within me. It's something I have because I'm part of a larger body. The the Bible talks about the people of God. The New Testament never really sets up the, the ideal of the individual Christian as normative. It's always the Christian in the church community. So the first thing I think we need to do as Christians is realize that uh, community, church community, has to be a priority. Jesus says, by this shall all men know you, my disciples, by the love you have for each other. There's a communal aspect right at the heart of what it means to be a Christian. Secondly, I think we need to understand the authority of the, the preached word. It's not just community. There are a lot of communities out there. What makes the church different? The church, the context for Christian discipleship, is the place where the word is proclaimed. Martin Luther would refer to the word as the word that comes from outside. Uh, My identity as a Christian is not something that arises up from within myself. It is something that is declared to me in church on a Sunday, which I grasp by faith. So the second uh, aspect is we need to think of our identity in terms of the, the external proclamation. Thirdly, then, we need to think of the content of that proclamation. What is the context of the proclamation? It's the history of God's dealings with his people culminating in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we all have a variety of identities. We're both husbands, we're fathers, uh, we probably support sports teams, we have hobbies, we're employees, we're uncles. I don't know about you, but I'm now a grandfather. We've got all these kind of identities around. But the fundamental identity for a Christian has to come from that which is objectively declared in the Word of God and grasped by faith. Thank you. Thank you um, for these thoughts, these insights, Dr. Truman. Uh, They're worthy of serious contemplation. And thank you for listening. Well, thank you so much for joining us for this episode of This is Asbury. To learn more about Asbury University, visit asbury.edu.